God bless everyone and welcome to this channel where I'll be sharing many powerful testimonies and supernatural stories that I pray will be a blessing to you. And today I have a very special guest with us. Her name is Jackie Van Tyne, and this sister has a testimony that you have to hear. So Sister Jackie, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much, Jose, for having me here. I'm really excited to share my testimony. Amen. Well, I'll let you take over and just begin that testimony. Yes. So I was raised Catholic and uh, going down from generation to generation, uh, both parents, Catholic, Roman Catholic. And I went to a Catholic school. And although I heard about God, I never really knew anything about him. My parents never really talked about God. And so I kind of lived my life uh, knowing about Jesus, but not knowing Jesus personally. And I went from, from state to state. I went to four different high schools in four different states. And everywhere I went, there was always a Christian saying, come to church with me. And I can look back on my life now and see how God was chasing me this whole time. And eventually I moved to Colorado from Connecticut to Colorado with a boyfriend. This boyfriend ended up being very, very mentally, emotionally abusive to me. And I remember I was driving in my car and I started listening to the Christian radio. I was very settled during this time period. And I was going through depression, having panic attacks, and I was addicted to drugs, unfortunately. Um, I was doing psychedelics. I was doing, uh, I was smoking marijuana to the point where I, I didn't even have a tolerance anymore because of how much I was smoking. I was addicted to cigarettes. And so I really felt like, wow, I've tried everything to stop all these drugs and I, I just simply can't, it's too hard. And I remember driving home and the, on the radio, there was a pastor that said these two verses that changed my life. And the first one was, anyone who says, I know him, I know God and does not do what he says is a liar and the truth is not in him. And I said, wow, like, I say, I know you all day long, Jesus. I say that, you know, I'm a Christian, but I don't obey you. I don't do what the things that you say. So do I really know you? And the second verse that this pastor had said was, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's from John 15. Jesus says that. I said, Jesus, I feel like I love you but I don't really love you. And the fact is, is that a lot of times we walk by feelings and we don't walk by the truth. And that's something that I've learned over the years is that just because I feel like something is true doesn't mean that it is true because our opinion doesn't change truth. Truth is truth, regardless of how we feel. And so I remember my 21st birthday was coming up. I was like, okay, I'm going to ask for a Bible from my boyfriend at the time. So I did. And I got the Bible and I didn't know how to read it because when I was raised Catholic, they didn't really teach me a lot about reading the Bible. And I asked God a question and I, and in the Christian circle now, you know, I know that people do this, but I didn't know that people did this before. I asked God a question and I opened to a random page with my eyes closed and I put my finger down and he answered me and he answered me in such a way it was so specific. I just could not. And I don't remember what I asked because I'm 27 now. This was when I was 20 years old or 21. And I was amazed and I kept coming home from work and I would read the Bible. And every time I would open it and expect God to speak to me. And he would, there would it would be a situation in that day. And I would literally read something from the Bible. And it was like, it was literally him speak with me and i remember i started praying and worshiping god putting on worship music and dancing in the room as if he was in the in, in in my presence as if he was right there and i started falling in love with him i just i fell in love with his presence i couldn't get enough and there was one night where i was on my knees i was by the couch and I was praying and I felt his presence so strong, I began to cry and I felt this heat come over my back. And I was in a cold, this is in Colorado, I was in a very cold room and this heat came all over my back. 
And I, all I could feel was, if it was like he was hugging me. And I was like, how could God physically touch me? I never knew that this could happen. And I felt this electricity going through my fingertips. And I was like, wow, you know, God, God's real. And the more that I started to uh, spend time with him, I, I began telling him, Lord, I know that I need to repent. I, I know I need to turn from my sin here, but I don't want to. I want to, but I don't want to. That addicts understand that, uh, that it's hard because you want to, but you don't want to. And I said, God, if I don't turn from my sin, and if this sin that I'm committing, not mm -hmm. just this, but sex outside of marriage, pornography, bisexuality, uh, gossip, lying, all that. If that's going to take me to hell, change me because I don't want to change. And I was so honest with God. I was so raw with God. And as I would spend time with God, he naturally, it's like you are who you spend time with, right? When you spend time with a friend, you start talking like them, saying things like them. And it was like all the desire to, to smoke, all the desire to smoke those cigarettes, all the desire to watch those movies and listen to that music and, and say lies and whatever, gossip. It was like it all went away. And I had a truly born again experience where I was born of the spirit of God and it transformed me. I, I was not the same anymore. And so as I walked in, in, in this you know, walk with the Lord, I started believing. I started taking the Bible and I was like, listen, this is in the Bible. Healing is in the Bible. Jesus said, preach the gospel to every living creature, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. That's the great commission to all of us. And I'm like, okay, Jesus. And when you're young in the faith, when you're a baby in the faith, a lot of times you're very zealous, right? And that's something I always appreciate about people young in the faith, that they're extremely zealous. This, this um, zeal was so strong. I was like, I'll go up to anybody and pray for them, whatever. I want Jesus to move. And I was an evangelist from the first, when I first came to the Lord, he, became, he made me an evangelist. And I was like, I want everyone to know Jesus. So there was one day where I was, in front of a gas station and there was two boys sitting out there one was 18 one was 28 and this is in the middle of the night and it was in the hood so it gets even weirder because the 28 year old was juggling bowling pins and as a woman <laughs> you go in there and you're like uh i'm gonna just run to my car when i'm done because i could get here and so I'm walking back and all of a sudden I hear, hey, you wanna see some juggling? And I'm like, God, like, you know? So I'm like, I, I don't know why, but I just felt this peace. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to him about Jesus, right? People would say I'm unwise, but I was listening to the Holy Spirit. The more you talk to him, the more he'll talk to you. You'll know his voice. Mm -hmm. So I went to these guys and I started talking about Jesus. And at one point, the 18 year old, he was asking me questions, but mocking me at the same time about God. And he said, he was like, no, I said, I, I started telling him, you know, I believe in Jesus. Like he is the only way, the truth and the life. And he's like, how do you know Jesus is the only way? How do you know it's not Buddha, Muhammad? How do you know it's Jesus? You're so narrow minded. And I said, well, I mean, I've just seen too much not to believe. And he's like, like what? said, I've prayed for the sick and they've been healed in Jesus name. And he's like, really? Well, I just broke my hand two nights ago, fix it. And he's like, I can't move it, fix it. And he has this extends this broken hand to me that is obviously broken. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, I can't do this. Like, this is not, this is not a fever. This is not, this is legit a broken hand. <laughs> But I said, and, and I have, I'm having this conversation in my head with the Lord, like real time, right? And it's taking a few seconds, but it's all going in slow motion. And I'm like, but just so he knows you are the only way, Father, do this. And so I grab his hand very gently and he's kind of like, you know, you know, kind of weirded out or whatever. But I grabbed his hand around here, the palm area, very gently. And I said, bones, ligaments, repair yourselves right now in the name of Jesus. And I kid you not, an ex the, the truth exaggerated is a lie. I don't believe in white lies, right? Lying is extremely serious and 
the devil is called the father of lies. So I don't believe in that, all that. God will deal with me. I felt the bones clicking in my hand here. And when I pulled away, he, he was like, he started moving, op opening, opening and closing. He couldn't believe it because he couldn't move it before. And he starts doing push-ups. And he's like, you're a witch. And I'm like, no, I'm not a witch. <laughs> Jesus did this. He loves you. He healed you. I didn't do anything. And in the end, he's like, he's like, can I just go home and talk to Jesus? Can I just, even though I'm doing all these drugs and stuff, can I just talk to him? And I said, yes, he loves you. He will help you out of all of that. It's amazing. I love these stories because it brings so much glory to God. I, uh, I was, I, I actually, I just met this man from YouTube. I was doing a live, right? And I was praying for people. And there were some people that were saying, hey, like I, I have a broken back. There, there was one guy that said, I have uh, not a broken back, but my, I have pain in my back. And I said, okay, let me, let me pray for you right there on the live. And I'm praying for him. And I think a week passed by, he contacted my husband and he was like, you know, we, we ended up meeting on Zoom and we talked with him and uh, it was like, you know, I live here in, in, in this area. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so close to us. Let's meet up in person. And I'm like, I'll pray for you in person. And so uh, he has been, he was in a, a wreck because, and if you're watching this, I hope that it's okay that I'm sharing this, Griffin. Um, but anyways, he, uh, he was w on his bike late at night in this like, you know, I, I believe it was just this like little road that there's no cars around. And he was uh, driving and a drunk driver came and hit him. And he literally, his entire left side of his body was literally broken and like completely shattered. I think his left leg, like the muscle was like scraped off of his bone. Like it was so horrific. And he was left, he was bleeding out. He was literally dying. And this man came out of nowhere. There's no car, nothing. He's dressed in all white and he grabs him and he, he, um, he drags him to the road. And while he's holding him, he has, um, the adrenaline is just running through him. And he feels like as this person is holding him, the adrenaline that's pumping through this person to him is keeping him alive. And all of a sudden the ambulance comes and this man just disappears and he's saved. But he looks around, there's no car, the man's gone, and the ambulance, he's like, the guy, where's the guy? And they're like, we didn't see anybody. There's nobody out here. Wow. And well, he had a supernatural experience, I'm guessing, with, a, with an angel. And we know that the Lord does send his celestial angels to help us, to guide us, and sometimes to protect us, such in this yes. case. So what a powerful testimony. Amen. And keep yes. going. And it was I, like hearing that story, I was like, wow. And he only had 50 minutes to meet with us in person. So he's telling me the story. I'm so amazed. And he has to go to a physical therapy appointment right after for his back. And this has been years of back pain. Like he's tried everything, everything under the sun. And this, this, um, this, this person that uh, he sees, the uh, physical therapist, actually is in the town that I am in right now. <laughs> so crazy. It's so crazy that he was on my YouTube live. But anyways, so we're having such a great conversation. He cancels the appointment. We go in front of this beautiful lake, and it's kind of isolated from everybody else. We're in this little table with these, with these uh, metal chairs. And he starts telling me about how he needs to forgive his dad. And um, I all, all of a sudden, I'm like, Lord, I know I'm going to pray for him, for his back. But I feel led by you to, to lead him in a prayer for forgiveness. And so, you know, he closes his eyes. And I'm like, you know, leading him through kind of like an exercise. Just imagine Jesus and imagine your dad right next to you and bring him to the cross, pray for him, and let him walk away with Jesus. Just give him over to God right now. 
And as he's wearing sunglasses and as he's doing this, I just see tears falling from his eyes. And I'm like, wow, praise the Lord. Like he's been being touched by the Holy Spirit. And uh, all of a sudden I feel the Holy Spirit say, go pray for his back. I'm like, okay. So I go and I, I pray for his back and I'm praying that, you know, the spine would align and everything. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit tells me, Jackie, pray for, uh, pray, pray that the spirit of bitterness will leave because he forgave his dad. So pray that the spirit of bitterness will leave his back. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, in the name of Jesus, spirit of bitterness, leave his back, leave his back. And he, you know, I pull away. I'm like, this is in faith, God. This is in faith. I believe that you healed him. You delivered him. He's like, I feel lighter. He's like, I know I just got deliverance. And he said, I forgive my dad. And I'm like, well, how do you feel? He's like, I don't feel any pain. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, don't lie. You know, you don't. And he's like, I literally don't feel anything. And he could not like lift up things at all. And here's this really heavy metal chair. He's like, let me just test it out. And he lifts up this heavy chair and he's doing this. And for like 20 minutes, he's dancing around doing movements he could not do before. And he's like, I can't believe it. God literally just healed me. Amen. Incredible. So, you know, uh, and, and, and I'm just going to say this last part too, Jose is, um, you know, before my ministry started on YouTube, I, I was, I thought that I, I, I believe that there was a man that was my husband who was studying alongside me. I was studying ministry at a Christian university. He was studying to be a pastor. And I thought he was my husband for two years. Uh, he led me on. And um, I asked him one night, I called him and I said, have you been flirting with me the, the past two years? He says, no. And then he got a girlfriend, he got engaged and I was torn up. And that month or that, that summer, I went back to all the things that God had delivered me from. I went back to drugs. I went back to outside of marriage. I went back to all of that. And I was so depressed. I went on antidepressants, everything. And God had been telling me this whole time, Jackie, do YouTube, make YouTube videos, make YouTube videos, right? And I've had this prophecy over my life for years. And people would tell me, and it would always be somebody random that doesn't even know me. Jackie, you're going to speak to millions. And you're going to teach millions and you're going to, you know, God's going to use your voice to mm -hmm. preach. To and I'm like, you know, I believed it, but then I was like, I don't know how that's ever going to happen. And my greatest desire is to bring souls to Jesus because I'm an evangelist at heart. Right. So that's my, my dream, right. To bring many to his feet, but I wasn't ready. And I was delaying the process because of my disobedience. But anyways, he was telling me make YouTube videos. And I was like, no, I'm too busy trying to get a husband. What you won't give me. <laughs> and finally, all the consequences of my sin got to me and it hit me in the face. And I came back to my first love and I fell in love with Jesus again. And I lost the desire for a husband. And my husband now messaged me. He saw me on YouTube. He does YouTube as well, Christian YouTube. Same thing. He went on YouTube and he saw the first thing on his homepage was my video, clicked on it, said, wow, she knows the word. She's beautiful. Let me, you know, send an Instagram message, does it? And he happened to live 30 minutes away and his, his pastor of his church was my professor at my Christian university. And I was like, wow. And so we clicked and long story short, it was literally the Lord. We had so much peace. We lined up completely, very equally yoked. And we got married in three and a half months because we felt led by the Lord. Not, not only that, but we also wanted to honor the Lord. And uh, it was better to marry than to burn because we knew we were going to get married, but we were getting very close to, you know, not very close, never like anything like, you know, taking your clothes off or anything like that. But we were, it was, it was to a point where we were kissing and it was not, it was not honoring God. So it was amazing. It's amazing because it was, and th that's where my ministry took off, but it was through my obedience to do YouTube, what God was telling me this whole time, that I found that my husband found me. 
it was through the, the obedience to do that. And um, anyway, so, so, you know, I'm doing it now and, and there's hefty price to pay, you know, different things. Um, but, you know, it's not always easy having comments uh, that people persecute you for your faith, etc. cetera. But uh, I'm just very, very grateful that the Lord um, has given me the opportunity to do something that he has told me for years to do. And finally, with my me aligning myself with the Lord and his will and being obedient, he's entrusted to me. And glory to God, he makes beauty from ashes. So, So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about my experience with witchcraft. When I was going to college, I would call myself a Christian, right? But I was dabbling into witchcraft. And what a lot of people think is just new age practices or being spiritual is actually witchcraft. So I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Basically, I was uh, using crystals to bring certain things to me. So practicing crystals, I was I was looking at tarot card readings. I mean, addicted to tarot card readings, and I was um, seeking psychics. And <clears throat> during this time, um, I was really trying to control. I was trying to control the future. I was trying to know the future, and I think that that's where we uh, start dabbling into these kinds of things is that we don't trust God with our future, but we want to take control. And knowing the future is what makes God, God, right? And I'm going to get into how, how I've had um, encounters with demons through this, but I feel led to just say this part, you know, witchcraft, the way that when you go to a psychic to talk to them about like, Hey, can you please talk to my relative for me? What happens is that the psychic is able to tell you details that only your relative could tell you like their special pink box with a little feather on top under their bed, that special box only that relative could know about. Well, it's because there's a familiar spirit, right? The Bible talks about familiar spirits. And actually when we read about Samuel, when, when Saul was summoning Samuel, the prophet Samuel, after he died for information, it was a familiar spirit, a lady with a familiar spirit that summoned Samuel. So this familiar spirit, it's like, it's like a demon hotline. So the person you'll go to the psychic, the psychic will speak to the familiar spirit that was around your grandma to get the information, to relay it to you. And then thus deceiving you that you are speaking to your grandma and you're not. So that's something that God taught me about uh, psychics. But when I was dabbling into this, I began to have episodes of what's called sleep paralysis. And uh, the first few episodes, I would be, I would wake up uh, after being asleep for a little while. And all I could do was look around my room, right? And I was awake. This is not a dream. I was completely aware of everything, but I could not move. I could not speak and I was at a very heightened level of fear. So to explain this kind of supernatural fear from a different dimension, basically if somebody says boo to you, boo, your, your fear will go up peak and go down. This is right here at the peak the whole time. That's to explain it. And you know that there is an evil presence in the room and you can't move. You can't speak. And, um, this happened a few times, but the one time that I'll never forget, I was in Colorado, I was living with a boyfriend at the time who was very abusive. And um, I look to, I'm in my bed and I'm having this, I'm waking up, I'm having the sleep paralysis. And I look to my left and I see what looks to be like an alien. It, it's like a huge shadow alien. And its head is like that big, kind of like an airhead. It looks kind of like Slender Man. Yeah, and we know that the um, demons have the ability to transform into all kinds of different things. And one of those things they use is aliens, uh, extraterrestrials, try to confuse us to believe that there's life in other planets, to discredit, you know, the Bible uh, mm -hmm. story of how we came to be. Amen. And yes, you're right. I've heard so many testimonies, even from people that were supposedly abducted by these 
aliens. But then when they cried on the name of Jesus, they called it on Jesus. These aliens would shriek in pain. Why would an alien care about the name of Jesus if it wasn't a demon? Right. 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 Yes, Josue. Absolutely. And it's to also to deceive us into believing that aliens created us. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, no. Um, so these are demons that disguise themselves as aliens. And actually, I was always afraid of aliens when I was little. So when I was seeing this, I was like, oh my gosh, and I'll never forget what I saw. Never forget. But it didn't have a face, but I knew it was looking at me. It was very strange. Actually, I never told you, uh, Josue, but my husband, when he was doing deliverance on me uh, some months ago, he actually saw the same demon hovering over me. He came, this is the first time he's ever seen a demon. He walked into the room and it was like a demon was trying to hover, hover over me. Wow. And it was, and it, he said it didn't have a face, but it was looking at me. So um, it was the same thing. And it was, it, it was just crazy. So anyways, I opened the door for the spirit. And I believe it was the spirit of fear. I believe, but I don't know which spirit it was. The point is, is that when we dabble into witchcraft, we open spiritual doors to demons and we don't know what demon is going to come in. And when you go to a psychic, when you do astral, you know, uh, projection, or when you, uh, look at, uh, the tarot cards or whatever, you are actually getting lies. They're lies. There might be a little bit of truth sprinkled in there so that it confuses you to think it's all truth, but it's not. And, um, so anyways, that is, uh, that is my experience with, with witchcraft. It's not to be played with. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Amen. I mean, well, thank you for sharing that as a warning to anybody who's thinking of getting involved in that. Um, I actually have uh, somebody I know that practiced that, and she was taken to one of those spiritual houses where they did all kinds of witchcraft because they mm -hmm. wanted to like put protection over her or something like that or blessings over her. But actually, I put a curse over her life because uh, her memory has been completely altered since that. She said, ever since that day, she went one time to that spiritual house. They prayed over her. They did like a circle. She's had a lot of memory problems, a lot of focus problems. She can barely remember, you know, her friend's name sometimes. Um, and she came to Jesus Christ. You know, she now serves the Lord, loves the Lord, preaches the word. But she still struggles with those memory problems and those focus problems ever since that day that she went to practice witchcraft. So it just goes to show sometimes the effects, the consequences of dabbling in the occult, they can last for decades. In her case, it's been over three decades and still hasn't obtained restoration from that those mental difficulties that she has. So let this be a lesson to anybody who's considering dabbling into the occult, into tarot cards, into astrology. I urge you and Sister Jackie urges you to please reconsider reconsider and Josue that's crazy that you say that because I have memory issues heavily yeah. I can look at something and immediately forget what it was and I've been praying Lord help me with this because it's it's still an issue so I think that that's that's probably uh the effects of witchcraft um and my mom has been recently carpooling and giving rides to a woman who in her job does santeria and has literally necklaces of the santeria you know how they have the beads and everything and she's mm -hmm. been giving rides to her every day and my mom literally told me that she's driving home and she forgot who she was and she's wow. freaking so wow. there's something to that. So thank you for sharing that. I'm going to have to look way more into that. Yes, yes. And I've heard the same thing from another person who emailed me, how she also took her mother uh, and they pay them so much money to these people, only instead of being blessed to receive her sister, to receive these spirits, to give legal rights for certain you know, evil beings to be able to later uh, affect them physically. And I have one other person that I know that also dabbled in witchcraft and became horribly sick. Several people actually became horribly sick after dabbling in witchcraft. And, you know, they prayed and they asked the Lord to heal their bodies. But God is God. And um, I guess in his time, he will bring them that healing. But it just goes to show, you know, there are consequences. God can forgive us. He loves us. But 
he established certain spiritual laws. Whatever we sow, we're going to reap. And there are certain sins that really that really reach his throne. Witchcraft, the occult, um, those are serious offenses in front of the, the eyes of the Lord. So I really encourage everybody, if you're thinking that that's going to give you the solution, if you're thinking that's going to give you powers, um, please reconsider. I've had so many people that I've met that have gotten into witchcraft, including my mother. My mother uh, got the power of telekinesis to move objects with her mind. She got the power to heal people. She got all these different powers from these demons that she made packs with. But then they started to torment her. Um, and when she decided to leave that world, uh, even Satan himself and other demons came to torment her physically until she was able to get that freedom by praying and declaring herself to be property of Jesus Christ. But even now, she still struggles with a lot of those effects from that time that she spent dealing with witchcraft from the ages of 12 to around 19. So definitely something that we should avoid at all costs, no matter how movies present it, because mm -hmm. Hollywood does a fantastic job of promoting witchcraft and making it seem exciting and fun. And, oh, you can have all these wonderful abilities and you can astral travel, all these different things that we know are not of God that are mm -hmm. going to bring serious consequences. So I encourage anybody who's listening to this that's practiced that to just ask the Lord to break all packs, all covenants that you made from any time you dabbled in those things and tarot cards, going to a psychic. One story real quick. You mentioned Derek Prince. I yeah. saw a testimony with Derek Prince that he was praying for a young man who wanted to receive the gift of tongues. And they prayed and he wasn't able to receive it. And then the Holy Spirit told Derek Prince, to ask the young man if he ever practiced the occult, if he ever dabbled in that. Mm. And the young man said, actually, one time I did go to a psychic and I consulted with a psychic. And so Derek Prince told him, okay, let's break all those packs, all those covenants you made right now during that one day. And then let's let's pray again. And so they, they spoke out loud. They prayed out loud for God to destroy those covenants, those packs. That he made on that day when he visited the psychic and then after that the young man started speaking in tongues he finally received the wow. gift of tongues and you know what blocked it that one time he chose to dabble in the occult wow. and that's how serious it is that's how serious uh this stuff can be it can even block the gifts of the holy spirit and think about how many gifts we could have. We could have the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles, like you have them, sister, to use those gifts to help others, to bless others. Amen. But the enemy has all these strategies to keep those spiritual gifts hidden, to keep our ministries paralyzed. So I just encourage everybody to ask the Lord for more discernment, especially when you engage in any activity that the world is promoting. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Josue. Yes. Wow. That's good. you got some good stories, Josue. Yeah, that's I spent awesome. a lot of time on YouTube listening to testimonies, and that's what motivated me to start changing the direction of this channel and just focus on doing testimonies because there's so much power. God is never going to reveal everything to one single person. He reveals different things to different people. And so that's why I love, love hearing testimonies. And when I found yours, I felt by the Holy Spirit that I should contact you because I knew that the Holy Spirit was going to speak to a lot of the different viewers and show them new things through you that maybe he can't show them through me. Amen. Thank you, Josue. I'm really honored. Thank you so much for having me here. It was really a pleasure. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful Christian testimony of what the Lord has done. And I hope it serves to be you know, a word of hope for everybody who's kind of lost hope, who feels like, you know, maybe you're struggling with some of the same things that Sister Jackie used to struggle with, and you can't seem to find a way out. There is a way, and his yes. name is Jesus. And so we invite you all to accept him into your heart if you have not done so yet. And he will do the same thing they did for Sister Jackie, the same thing that he did for me with you as well. Amen. So... Again, I just want to thank Sister Jackie for allowing us to do this interview. It's such an honor to have her here. I'm going to leave her channel in the description so you all can check it out. I've watched several of her videos and they were a blessing to myself. And if you enjoyed this video, I ask you that you please give it a like, you please subscribe, and that you please share it so that this small channel can keep on growing and we can reach more souls for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because like our sister Jackie said, that's the main goal here, to reach souls for the Lord. 
especially now that we are running out of time and that the Lord's return is quickly approaching. We want to reach as many people as possible. And I also want to invite everybody who's watching to join my one year fasting chain that I'm organizing in which I'll be fasting every day during 2024 for all the petitions that you bring to this ministry through the comments in my videos, through emails. I'll be praying and fasting every day throughout this year. It's something God put in my heart and with the help of the Lord, I'm gonna be able to reach this goal and hundreds of other people have already joined us. So I invite you to join as well, even if it's just one day a week or two, two days a month, whatever you can. And we have faith that God is gonna do mighty things. He's already answered a lot of these petitions. People have received healing and miracles. And I have faith that God is gonna keep doing more. And until next time, my name is Brother Josue Gutierrez. God bless you and stay safe.